Greetings, I'm Parent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're continuing our playthrough of Kingdom Death Monster. We just took down a level 3 antelope. It was an amazing fight. I had a fantastic time. We only lost one person, so I think we did pretty good. We're going to go ahead and move into the settlement phase now and see what happens to our brave survivors. Of course, at the end of the battles, I always go ahead and do the hunt XP during our settlement phase. So let's go ahead and take care of the hunt XPs and web proficiencies for our three survivors that came back. Sorry, Kanan is super dead. She is super, super dead. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that. First, we have Ullen. I went ahead and put in his two hunt XP. Now, of course, we do get to roll our two dice and see what happens for our age event that we've seen a million times. Let's go ahead and roll the dice. We've got an eight, which means he's going to get a random fighting art. So we're going to go ahead and give these a good old truffle shuffle here. And we're going to grab a fighting art out of our deck and see what we get. We're going to take this one right here. It'll be our fighting art. It'll be awesome. Let's see what he has. He has crazed on a perfect hit gain one in sandy oh that might be actually pretty good so we're gonna go ahead fill in that and move on to our next character this time dandelus is next he's gonna go ahead and roll his two dice and see what he gets we're gonna also i forgot to do weapon proficiencies um for allen we've given him spear because I'm planning to kind of move forward with spears with those people. And now we also have bow for Fist on Dandalus because he fired that bow and he did such a good job. Let's see what he gets for his age event. He got a total of nine, which again is going to be a fighting art. So we're going to go ahead and mix up our fighting arts and see which one he gets. Hopefully he gets a pretty good one. Oh, Craze was okay, but I'm hoping for something maybe a little bit better. Let's go bow time. Combo master on a perfect hit, make an additional attack roll with his bow. That's going to be awesome. I hope that works right. All right, we're going to go ahead, write that down on his card, and move on to the next character. Gold Moon is our last survivor. We're going to go ahead and give her club. Of course, unless these dice decide on something different. She's gone ahead and got a natural double. That's awesome. Two tens. That means she rolled a 20, and she gains permanent luck. That is awesome. Awesome. Plus one luck. Oh, so good. I think we had another character to get that too. I think it was Kaz. All right, she's done and we're going to move on. With our returning survivors finished, we're going to move into the settlement phase. And if you're excited to see what happens, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. Now, if we go ahead and take a look, we're going to have our survivors return. Then we're going to gain our endeavors. We get one, two, three for our returning survivors. Then we get two for Kanan. Then we're also going to gain one more because of our cooking innovations. We have, what, three, six endeavors that we can do. Now, the next thing I have to do is update our timeline. So we're going to go ahead and see what happens as we draw our event and do what it says on our sheet of paper. We have come to Lantern Year 19. There's a total of 30, so we're way over halfway. We're almost two thirds of the way through. At this point, I'm also just gonna update my death count. This is a different, at a different time, but I'm just gonna do it now since we're at this point in the game. So we have to draw a settlement event and we also have to take on the Kingsman level two during this year. So we're gonna go ahead and give these a little truffle shuffle here and see which one we get. We're gonna take this one right here. Hopefully it's not death and destruction or evilness. They're usually all pretty evil. It is Skull Eater. Randomly choose a returning survivor and give them plus three insanity. If there are no returning survivors, choose a survivor from the settlement to gain plus three insanity. The survivor consumes the skull of a deceased survivor. They awoken the hunger that cannot be stopped and roll on the table below. They gain the following impairment, morrow hunger. When the murder or skull enter eater e settlement events are drawn, this survivor is nominated. Oh, yuck. All right, let's see what we can do here. So I have to randomly choose a returning survivor. We can do that. We're gonna roll a die. On a one, two, three, it's Gold Moon. On a four, five, six, it's Ullen. And on a seven, eight, nine, it's Fist on Dantalus. All right, we have rolled a six. It's going to be Ullen. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it is Ullen. 
Alan is our skull eater. He is going to go ahead and roll on the table below. Hopefully he gets a high number because that would probably be better. Oh, it's cocked. Let's roll it again. We got a it's still cocked. Let's roll it again so it's not four. All right. Let's see what we get. Four. Skull Eater's activities go unnoticed. They gain one permanent strength and courage and murder settlement event to the timeline next year. Oh, no. I have to add a murder. Okay, so we get the Hooded Knight, who's going to be awesome. Plus, then we're also going to add what? Murder? M-U-R. I always spell murder. <laughs> I don't want to even deal with this. It's going to be terrible. All right. Murder sweetness to the timelines. We have to deal with a hooded knight. We're going to be watched, and we have a murder, and we also deal with the settlement event. That's awesome. But he does get plus one permanent strength and plus one courage, so we're going to give that to Alan. With our bone skull eater thing resolved here, resolved, we're going to go ahead and update the death count. We have done that. We're going to check our milestone. We've done that. We're going to go ahead and develop. We have an absolute monstrous amount of stuff. I have so much stuff, I don't even know what to do. So this is everything we have from our hunts and our battle with that antelope. It's an absolute monstrous amount of stuff. I don't even know what to do with it all. Some of the things I could do is somebody's been telling me that cooking is important and I should be looking into cooking. I looked into it. I could use this nightmare tick and some of these other resources to create plus one evasion on a character, which wouldn't be too bad. I think we're going to save the nightmare tick and not use them during this settlement and maybe use it next time because we know that murder event is coming. And so we're going to be losing our highest XP survivor. So maybe it'd be best to use is that in the next turn when we come back from our next hunt or next adventure I should say because we're not be hunting anything we're gonna be having to take out a Kingsman or something we're gonna go ahead and first we have to innovate so I am gonna use a bone an organ and a hide we're gonna spend these three resources and of course one of our endeavors to go ahead and innovate so I'm gonna take this deck mix it all up we get four of these because of our symposium event one two three and four. These are the four we're going to take. There's only three left. Let's see what we have found. We have found partnership. Now, of course, I'm pretty sure we've seen these all. Sacrifice. This is new. This was from our shrine one. Death ritual. One pointless death, two, negative two population. Wow. Screamer. Negative one population, departing survivors gain in Sandy. Grim acceptance. Negative one population, departing survivors gain plus three in Sandy. Negative one population, you lose all of your insanity and must remove one of your disorders, or may remove one of your disorders. If you do not depart this settlement phase, you may now do so, even if you're retired. Oh my gosh, that's actually not too bad, but look at this. I'm, I, I'm going to lose a population every time we do this, so okay. So that's sacrifice, and then we've got bloodletting. This is the one I wanted last time, because I can get rid of, it says down here, the bottom one, cured, gain six insanity. You may remove one of the following, a disorder of your cho choice, Warped pelvis or intestinal prolapse. And this is going to be awesome. One understanding, lose all survival. Okay, the settlement phase for any reason. Nah, uh, all right, well, that's the way it goes. I think I might keep this one. What's our last one? Sculpture. Yeah, we're going to get rid of these three. I'm going to grab bloodletting this time. Bloodletting is going to be the innovation we take for this adventure here, for our settlement. Now I have to figure out what we're going to make. One thing we can do is we can create our blacksmith. It takes six bone and three scrap. Oh, we can't. I only have two scraps. We can't even make the blacksmith at this time. So I wonder what we could make. Let's look through our settlement events and figure out what we can get. Or sorry, settlement locations. Here's what I was thinking about making. So we could take our stone circle. Since we can't do our blacksmith, this is what I was thinking. I could create right now an entire set of screaming gear to replace the rawhide set that somebody's using right now. On top of that, I can also create the Lance of Longinus. Those that have seen Evangelion, that's where I think this is from. It says, I need my legendary horns, which we got in that last adventure. I need that and six organs. Now that would take pretty much everything we have. One, our organs are here. One, two, three, four, five, and I have an extra small hands. So that's our six organs. To make the rest of this, I will need my spiral horn, which I have right here. One scrap, bring me down to one, which is going to make it harder to make that blacksmith. I then can grab, I need one, two, three, four pelts, which I have one, two, and I have two still in my gear here. Two pelts here, so that's four pelts. And I need two hides and a bone. I've got one two hides here and then of course I've got a lot of bone. I've got an absolute exorbitant amount of bone. That way I could actually start getting rid of some of our gear that stuff that's taking up multiple slots in our gear grid and start using only maybe one weapon at a time. I could start giving that person our king spear and the other one I could give the lance of Longinus to. 
our Lance of Longinus is very similar to our King Spear, except for one thing. It's got nine strength as opposed to three. Now, of course, the only problem with it is it is irreplaceable. So if I lose it, I would actually, it would be really bad. Each showdown, the first time you wound the monster, it gains a negative one toughness token. So I would have to go fight a level three again to get this back if I lose this during a fight. So I might build it, but not use it in the next fight because I'm afraid to lose these things to the Kingsman. I feel the Kingsman's going to rock us and I would hate to lose the Lance Lodge just that because we know we can take a level three antelope down. We could go ahead and use it during that fight. I think that's going to be our play. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of our organs. We're also going to go ahead and get rid of our four pelts, one of our hide, another one of our hide from the storage here, bringing us down to one hide. Where is it? Oh, I use my small hands. And then here's my monster hide. I'm down to one. I've used both of our pelts, and it leaves me with tail feathers, fresh acanthus, sword beetle. I still have three skulls. I only have one broken lantern now, a scrap. I have four iron, which I can't even do anything with. And of course, like I said, I could make this nightmare tick, but in order to do that, I would have needed to make the, the actual concoction, I would have needed the beast steak that I just used. We, of course, have to use our legendary horns to create the Lance of Longinus. And I believe that's going to be it. So I might go ahead and archive these unless I see something else that would be cool. I don't think there's anything else that I can build at this point. We're going to be left with a ton of bone, and that's fine. We can use that when we finally get our blacksmith up and running. We can start using this bone to create some of our iron armor, which would be really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back into our settlement storage. We're going to just archive all that stuff into the resource storages. And we're going to continue on with the rest of our thing, which we have done develop. We're going to prepare our departing survivors. And we're going to record and archive resources, and we're going to end the settlement phase. Now, of course, if there's anything out here you see that you think I would want, that you think would be really good, please let me know. And maybe I can try to get that onto one of our characters before we do our fight. Because there isn't going to be a hunt phase, so I have no problem switching out something before we actually take on our Kingsman level 2. After a lot of thought and debate as to what I should do, I have decided actually to not create these. I've decided not to create another set of screaming armor. The reason why is because I have so many resources that if we can ever get the blacksmith opened, I could really create some great gear. So I think I want to again save almost everything except for what I use to make the Lance of Longinus. So we're going to keep that but we're going to give back the other gear. If you think that's a bad idea, please let me know in the description below. Or if you have an idea of what you think we should make, please let me know in the description below. We're going to continue on. I still have all of these endeavors. We're going to go ahead and use these endeavors to try to do some awesome things. The first thing we're going to do is our bloodletting. I want to spend an endeavor to go ahead and bloodlet. Now, of course, I also have to spend a resource and roll a d10. Well, we have a couple resources. We're going to use our crab spider, and we're going to try to cure Huma. Huma has that apathetic and disorder, which is absolutely terrible. He's going to go ahead and roll and see what happens. Hopefully he gets a really good number. No, he got a one. That's not going to be very good at all. Let's see what it says here. It says, you gain one understanding, lose all survival, and you cannot gain survival of the settlement phase for any reason. Awesome. So he's apathetic, no survival, but he does gain one understanding, meaning he has hit a milestone in understanding which of course we have seen many times. Since he's in during the, was it the settlement phase? He's gonna gain one of these. He gains the Tinkerer, one right here, and then he's gonna roll a d10 and let's see what he gains. He got a Lantern 10, which means he gains one permanent strength. So if we can just get rid of this, he would be awesome. He's gonna go up to three permanent strength, that's amazing. Now, sadly, that was our bloodletting. I could try it again if I want to. I don't think it says I can only do it once per settlement phase, but we have some other things I want to do. Of course, we want to try our face painting so we can get our guys with full survival leaving here, plus an extra insanity or two isn't bad. So let's see what we got. We got an eight. We were able to survive face painting. I'm going to go ahead and ditch another one of these. I also want to do our records. We took down a level three antelope. I'm going to go ahead and spend this, and we're going to go ahead and retire somebody. We are actually going to retire... Burham Everman. He's our savior. I know it, but he's also got an intracranial hemorrhage, which means he can never use survival anyway. So if I can get, I know there's probably a, uh, innovation here that could probably help with this, but I'm just going to get rid of him. He's going to be the one that retires because it says on here that I have to retire him because he spends all this time writing about it. 
You laboriously create a volume about a monster you have defeated during your lifetime. Add monster name X volume X, where X is the level of the defeated monster, to the settlement record sheet. The work is exhausting. You retire. There can be up to three volumes of each monster. Oh, let's hear about a monster you have defeated. He hasn't defeated it. Oh, no. i got to get rid of one of those other guys, but they're so good. I think it's only fitting. We're going to go ahead and have Fist on Dantalus, who has defeated the level 3 antelope. Go ahead and use that. He's got his combo master, which is pretty cool, and here's our bow guy, but he also already has negative 1 accuracy, and he only has plus 1 strength, or other characters have so much more going for them. So he's going to retire, but he is going to be able to do our records for the level 3 antelope. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down on our sheet. Now again, he was not defeated or died or anything. He just retired. So he stays in our settlement population pool. Continuing on, I think we're going to go ahead and do our shrine as well. We're going to roll that up and see what happens. Hopefully I get a 4 or better. I got another Lantern 10. So everybody's going to be able to gain the extra armor when we're able to go out of here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remember these two that we get to keep because we're going to gain the benefits from those. Those are going to go back. I had to spend a survival of that, leaving me with one, which means we can go ahead and use this one to... Oh, what is it? Oh, we can auger. I'm going to go ahead and auger. Let's see if we're able to get some intimacy going on here. Now, in order to do that, I have to select a survivor. I'm going to go ahead and select. We're going to select Gold Moon. Gold Moon is going to go ahead and do it. We're going to roll. She got a four. I don't think that's going to be any good. Four is not that. It is gain one survival. Awesome. So we've used our last endeavor to gain a survival. So she's going to go up to five. And that's it. We're done with our development step. Again, please let me know if you think there's anything I should have probably created during this time that I didn't because I just i am not that great at this game. But we have a lot of people out there in the comments section that has been doing this game for a lot or knows a little bit more about it. The community for this game is absolutely phenomenal. I enjoy having you all with me. We're going to continue on with departing survivors and see what we do. Sarah is returning to our fight. She's going to go ahead and take on the White Lion Gear. This has never changed. It's exactly the same. So we're going to see how that goes. Next we have Owen. Of course, he has his anxiety, which isn't the end of the world. I think he gets a priority target token at the beginning of the showdown. Not the end of the world. He's going to go ahead and grab our Screaming Gear, and I have given him the Lance of Logis. We're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. I've also given him a Founding Stone, just in case we know of a critical hit coming from our Cat Eye Circlet, I can toss that if needed to to hopefully save some of our characters if something really bad is going on. That's going to be the end of him. He's going to go ahead and, of course, gain two to everything, or one to everything, I apologize, and then he's also going to gain the extra from the Shrine for his armor, which is pretty awesome. He's, the Screaming Gear is going to be able to give oh, 2 to everything, so he's going to get plus 3 to all of his hit locations on top of what you see here, which is an immense amount. So he's going to have 6 for his skirt and head, and 5 for all the other places. So I filled that in, and this is one of the reasons I was thinking about getting a full other Screaming Set, but if I do, I kind of lose the ability of using that bow, because this really doesn't work with a bow. It works with spears and guitars really well. Golden's continuing to go with us, and I thought she had the most hard XP. I forgot about the other characters. Like, we have Riverwind. Oh, Riverwind actually lost all the experience. We have Sylvaria. She has a ton of XP, so she's probably going to be the one that gets murdered, which isn't the end of the world because she's sadly not useful anymore. Oh, it's so sad when one thing can cripple a survivor so badly. I think she's apathetic, just like everybody else. She's going to go ahead and grab our entire leather gear set. It, again, hasn't changed. It's the same as what it was before. Six to all of our hit locations, which should be really good. And, of course, nine survival and five insanity. This is Morel. She's a new survivor that's going to be coming along with us. She's going to grab the raw hide gear. She's got an arc bow. I've given her the claw head arrow this time. She used to carry with her the pick and the, with the sickle, but we're not actually going to be able to use any of those because we're going to be going right into a nemesis fight. So instead, I've given her bandages and the claw head arrow in replace. Nine survival, three to everything, and we're going to see how it goes. And that's going to be it for our settlement video. We have gone through and done everything we can. It's going to be time to take on the Kingsman at level 2. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it through, but we'll give it our best shot. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the fight against the Nemesis comes up. It's going to be a lot of fun. I really like these Nemesis fights. They really are cool. Please leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. I know the settlement phase, I didn't do too much. Should I have done more with my resources? That's the biggest question I have. So if anybody has any ideas of what you think I should have maybe purchased and equipped to our characters to set out on our adventure here, please let me know in the comments below. And maybe I'll switch it up before that fight happens. That's going to be about it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're excited to see if we can take on that Kingsman level 2, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.